your girl Kiki Reader and welcome back to the Always Reading Book Club. We are diving back into our Breathless Trilogy. Don't be mad at me. I know I was supposed to have fever up by uh, Monday or Tuesday. It just didn't happen. Please forgive me. Um, but we are going to dive right back into that series. Um, Rush was the first book and I'm going to put that link uh, in the description below so you can go back if you need to listen to that book review and we are going to dive head first into fever so the book starts off um we're at gabe and mia's engagement party and while at the party uh jace keeps looking at this one server um she has like brunette hair she's kind of tall and ash caught him looking at the woman <laughs> And so Ash comes over and he's like, that's not like your usual type. And, you know, Jace tried to brush it off and was like, what, dude, like, I'm not looking at her. But like, you know, Ash knows this man. Like, yeah, you're checking that woman out. So Ash, being who he is, approaches the woman and found out her name is Bethany Willis. So then the book does what I love for it to do. And then it goes to Bethany's perspective. I just love when books do that. Um, so it starts to speak from her perspective. And we find out that she's having a pretty tough time in life. Um, at this point, at this party, she's like super tired. She's hungry. And um, there's like all this food that's going to be available for leftovers. And that's part of the gig kind of. Uh, being one of the servers is like you know you're able to take over leftovers so then she starts to speak of her she has a brother um but not by blood his name is jack and they grew up in um the foster care system together and jack is a drug addict and he basically only comes around when he's hungry or he's just broke so he shows up at this party because whenever she sees him or she talks to him she always tries to like let him know where she is and so she gives him money for the habit because she's kind of terrified that if she doesn't he's gonna like you know he's an addict so he'll do anything to get the money and she doesn't want anything to happen to him so she gives him you know when she barely has anything so jack comes by for the money she gives him half of her tips that she made for the night and then when jack leaves um ash approaches her and he automatically of course thought jack was her boyfriend and she's like you know no that's not my boyfriend you know and so then ash very bluntly asks her if she would like to have a threesome and at first she's offended you know and she starts to go in on him and then she sees jace appear so just like Jace has been watching her all night, she's been feeling his stares, but she's been looking back as well. So when she sees him, she's like, does dinner come with the proposition? <laughs> and, you know, being that she doesn't have anywhere to go, uh, Bethany, you know, Bethany's homeless. And so basically these are the options, you know, she could go back into the coal and hope she can get a bed at the shelter or she can go with these two gorgeous men, have a great meal. And it looks like probably a great time in the sack. So I think we know which one she's going to choose. <laughs> um, so she lets Ash know, you know, I just got to finish my shift. And um, Ash was like, you know, we'll pay you you know whatever for the remainder of your shift like we'll pay you and that kind of makes her feel some type of way she kind of feels like you know okay now you're trying to treat me like a prostitute and she's like you know i know i asked for dinner but that doesn't mean i'm for sale and so as you know he apologized he's like you know yo i didn't mean it like that you know i was just trying to figure out a way to get you out of here as quickly as possible <laughs> so he was able to, of course, get the party pretty much shut down because everyone had pretty much left. Me and Gabe were had left, you know, so it was time to kind of wrap that party up. So he was able to get everything wrapped up in about 15 minutes so she could get out of there. And so um, he uh, asked, you know, they asked her, you know, like, what did she want? 
And she was like, you know, a burger, fries, and some orange juice just sounds divine. And he was like, all right, I'm going to get this ballroom cleared for you, and we're going to have it ready for you. And that's what he did. So Jace comes up behind her, and he asks her, you know, if, if she's ready to go to upstairs. And, you know, of course, there's this energy between her and Jace. And she's like, we're just staying here? And he's like, well, yeah, we own the... the um, the hotel there's no need to go anywhere else so now she was like oh shoot she knew they were rich you know she could tell but she was just like a little taken but like oh my gosh like they're like rich rich you know so they go upstairs she eats her burger and fries well about half of it because ash had ordered steak and I guess he saw the way she was looking at the steak. So he would like offer her some and she would eat it. So between her eating his steak and her food, she only ate like half of her food. So then they tell her to go to the bathroom and do whatever she needs to like get comfortable and to meet them on the bed. So she um, does that. And then when she comes back, she gets on the bed and, you know, they get right into it. So she takes ash in her mouth and she lets Jace eat her woo-ha. And every time Ash would say something, it's like Jace would just tense up. And he was against the threesome in the beginning. Like, Ash kind of noticed it, but I guess because Jace was so willing to go along with it, you know, he was just like, whatever. I guess he's just tripping. But jace didn't want to really do this because he kind of he felt something off rip with bethany and so they could of course everyone could feel like the tent like just you know when someone gets tense you can feel it you know so then ash starts to like he puts his dick in her woo-ha you know and he's penetrating her ash is still in her mouth and he comes in her mouth which is crazy but okay do what you do you know like what you like so when they're done like they're all kind of hungry again you know i guess they worked up an appetite <laughs> and um she was hungry again too so they were like you know you want something else to eat she was like oh you know i'll just finish eating my burger and they were like what are you talking about no we'll just order you up something fresh and she was like oh okay so she goes she eats and um they ask her you know have you ever had one man in your pussy and the other man in your ass and she was like no and they had asked her before like you know she ever had a threesome and she had said yes but it, she was you know it wasn't that type of a threesome you know <laughs> so she agrees to do it and man, but Jace kept telling her, he's like, you know, you know, you don't have to do anything you're not comfortable with, you know, and Ash is looking at him kind of weird, like, dude, she just said she was down. And his reasoning was because, you know, for the first time, like he just, he didn't want Ash to touch her again. And so <laughs> that's why he was kind of trying to talk her out of doing this. But she said she wanted it. And. They said they will be gentle with her. And so here we go. So um, when she was about to come, she actually called out Jace's name, which made him happy because she very much did respond to Ash's touch. And that would and thus the reason, you know, Jace kept tensing up, you know, because he just he didn't he, he did not want that situation to be what it was. So. As soon as they were finished, like, Ash doesn't stay. Ash gets up. Ash leaves. <laughs> like, he goes in the other room. <laughs> He's done. <laughs> but, so, and that made Jace happy because, you know, he just wanted it to be him and her. And when they woke up, he just was going to get her himself, you know? So, the next morning, Jace wakes up. Bethany's gone. So, he tears off looking through the, the suite, like, panic. And she's, like, nowhere there. So he goes to the room where Ash is and he kind of has this panic because he's like, you know, he's going to be so messed up if 
he sees Bethany in the bed with him. It's just going to mess him up, you know? <laughs> so he opens the door, but she's not in there. But Ash is like, what the hell, dude? It's early. Like, what the f Like, why are you coming in here this early? And he's like, she isn't anywhere. Like, I haven't, like, she left. And so Ash doesn't understand what he's so upset about because actually that's the perfect scenario for them that they don't get a lot of times. Like, really never does the woman leave in the morning and doesn't say anything they normally try and stick around and then they got to try and get him out of there you know so ash is like okay well i'll help you look chill out you know so they go look around ash finds a note that she left and she just says you know i had a great time you know i'm so thankful for the evening and that was it so Jace, you know, crumbles the note up, throws it against the wall because he's pissed. And Ash is like, dude, why, why are you acting so different about this girl? And Ash was like, you acted like you didn't even want me there. And Jace was like, because I didn't. And so Ash was just like, well, why you just didn't say that from the beginning? And Jace was like, well, that was the only way I could have her. Like once she was like agreeing to the threesome, like I couldn't come back and be like, no, I don't want to do it. You know, so he was like she's got you know what i mean so jace at that point he like tears out of the room he leaves and he's trying to go and find her so it was a sunday so he couldn't get any information from the catering company you know until like that monday so it had been about two weeks and he finally was able to get some information but the only info he could get was an address to a church shelter. And so he just assumed like that was a place where she worked. And so he spoke with the uh, older woman who kind of ran the um, shelter. And he told her he was trying to contact, you know, this woman, Bethany, about a job. And so the woman was like looking at him kind of crazy. Like, why are you asking me? Like about a job for her like i'm confused and he's like well this is what was provided you know for an address for her i didn't ha there was no number but this was a phone um an address for employment and sh and he realizes the woman's like oh no she like she's like he realizes she's homeless like she just uses this address but it's not because she works here it's because she doesn't this is where she tries to have shelter sometimes and so Jace left his phone number and he tells the woman, you know, as soon as she arrives, please call me. And he also gave them like a huge donation because um, the heater had was broke and, you know, it was or it was winter. And so he made a huge donation so they could get their heat turned on and also buy a ton of food and things like that for the different um, women and, and children that were there. So Jace goes back to the office and Ash comes in and he's like, yo, you need to leave Bethany alone. You need to like leave that situation alone. It's bad news. And so come to find out Ash has been doing some digging as well, which is understandable. Like if you see your boy is like all into this woman and you've never seen him like this before and she's kind of you feel kind of sketchy like i get it you know these are extremely wealthy men even if they weren't wealthy people would check them out but being on that tip as well i i understand why ash would like you know look her up and try and see what's going on and so ash finds out you know that you know she grew up in foster care and that she had a drug possession charge and that she hasn't been able to keep a steady job and so jace tells him you know that just means she needs she needs our you know she needs help and he was like don't you feel bad that we took advantage of a homeless woman <laughs> and uh right at that point jace gets a call from the shelter and they're like she just arrived and she's hurt and so jace like storms out you know he's going to get her and so he gets to the shelter and he looks at her she appears a lot thinner than when he saw her because it's been about two weeks um and she like was like in and out of consciousness almost and so he's like you're i'm taking you out of here like that's it like this is you are you are never